here from RH Davy Welding Supplies. Right, short video here to show how to set up the or enter the program steps uh, which allow you to have full control over various aspects of your welding process uh, right from the start to the very finish. Okay, so on the uh, on the little key fob here we've got a little pictorial or line diagram of the uh, of the welding cycle from start to finish. Uh, starting with gas pre-flow uh, then we can have a hot start current okay or a hot start um, uh, wire feed and, and voltage trim uh, we've then got an adjustable slope down time from hot start current to main welding current uh, then we can adjust the time frame for it to slope down to a, a base current if we were using uh, a pulse uh, or a, a super pulse or a double pulse however you want to uh, describe it uh, the ramp up time it takes to get back to our main welding current and then at the end if we're using a, a, a crater fill um, then uh, we've got the option to select the uh, the time frame that it takes to slope down to our crater fill current and how long it spends there before the weld finishes and we get to our gas post flow okay so to uh, to access this uh, this sub menu uh, we need to press the mode key and it'll bring up some information in the window here we'll say that we've entered the program steps and we simply navigate our way through by working through it in, uh, in sort of numerical order. Okay, so starting first, we've got gas STR, gas start. Okay, pretty self-explanatory. That's the amount of time that the gas valve is going to be open before the weld starts. Okay, now we've got a very short torch on. Um, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of a second is absolutely fine. If we've got a very long torch on, like we have here, a six meter or an eight meter push pull gun, and you were doing something particularly critical, you'd want to make sure that all of the air was out of the torch, you'd purged it and that you were getting pure, nice, clean argon coming out um, if, you, if you didn't want any defects at the start of your weld, so you would increase that. Okay, a second is good, obviously longer if you want to be you know, more sure, depending on what you're doing. Uh, so I'm going to boost that up to about one and a half. Okay, if you're doing lots and lots of repeat starts, you know, you're not putting the torch down, letting all the gas drain out of it, you can you can bring that down, especially if you're doing lots and lots of tacking. It will become annoying waiting for the uh, gas valve to uh, to time and then let you uh, let you start your weld. But I'm going to leave that for us at 1.5 to start with. Next, you've got DV start. Now this is your uh, start voltage, okay, uh, or your start current, okay. Now we've got the option here um, because we want it to um, to start hot because aluminium is particularly thermally conductive. We don't want a um, uh, lack of fusion or, uh, or or a you know a big sort of proud ball that isn't melted in uh, and fused to our metal nicely at the start of the weld we can increase this okay so but it's going to be 130 percent so that's 130 percent of our main welding current here um, I'm going to leave it there next one is meters a minute wire feed speed I'm going to leave that alone that's factory set then we've got voltage trim at the start or you start voltage now if when I squeezed the trigger, the wire started to burn back towards the uh, towards the tip, and I wanted a shorter arc length, or I didn't want the wire to burn back to the tip right at the beginning, I could bring the voltage down. You can see we've got a minus here. This has already been set. Okay, we've got a little bit of neg of uh, going negative into the voltage to uh, to keep the arc length a bit shorter. If I go to zero, which is the default, and then I go into positive, we could get a very long hot arc right at the beginning and I would have a potential risk of it burning right back to the tip if I wasn't careful. So I like to have a, a little bit into negative when we're there. Next we've got T start, that's how long it would spend at the hot start current if we had it uh, selected. Okay, we've got 0.6 of a second here. Okay, again, fully adjustable. Time slope one, that's how long it's gonna to take to slope from our hot start current down to our main welding current, half a second. I like to have slopes in these things, it, it stops you getting such defined ridges in a weld where it goes from one current to another, it sort of phases it out a bit, uh, a bit more smoothly. But again, this is entirely user settable um, and it can be uh, you know, configured entirely to your preferences. T2 is the amount of time it spends at the hot, well, hot uh, or at the, at the main welding current uh, if we have a, a pulse set up. Um, if not, it'll just spend all of its time at this current until we let go of the trigger and then it'll slope out if we've got uh, crater fill selected. Right. TS2 is the time it takes to slope from main welding current down to our base current. Again, we've got a fairly short time here. Um, if we increase this time, it'll slow down every aspect of the, uh, of, of, of the pulse, or it'll slow down the ramp down anyway. 
it's going to drop down to 70% of our main welding current. This is DV3 percentage or voltage percentage. Again, my feed. Right, this is our voltage trim at the low part of the pulse. If we're finding that at the lower part of the pulse, the world's getting a bit cold and crackly and spitty, we can independently add a little bit of voltage there if we want to. Um, and it, when I say independently, if I alter the voltage here, it will have no effect on the voltage there. So I'm literally just tailoring my voltage characteristic at the low part of the pulse. Okay, I'll leave this part alone. T3, that's how long it spends at the base pulse. So we've got 0.1 of a second here. Again, we're going to have a fairly, fairly fast pulse, this. TS3, that's the time it's going to take to slope from our base current back up to our main welding current here. TSE is time slope end. That's how long it's going to take when we release the trigger to slope from our main welding current down to our crater fill current. Got half a second set here. It's going to slope down to 70% of our main welding current. These are all referenced off the main welding current we're running at, or the main wire feed speed, or the main amperage, however you've got the, uh, uh, the set configured to display that value to you. Voltage end. Okay, at the, uh, whilst we're at the crater fill current, we've also got the option to trim the voltage here, independently of all the rest of the voltage trims we had everywhere else. If when it's tailing out, the weld gets a bit cold, a bit spitty, a bit spattery maybe, as it often does when you reduce the voltage drastically, I can add a bit of voltage trim to keep the arc nice and smooth and keep the spatter out of it. Okay, Or I can leave it at the factory setting, which is uh, zero correction. But you've got the option to, to, to tweak these to, to suit yourself. Time at end current, that's uh, 0.7 seconds. Okay, so it'll, it'll weld for 0.7 seconds and then shut the arc off. And then the next thing is burn back. Okay, Ruek, the higher the number, the longer it'll keep the arc alight for after the wire is stopped. Okay, if, uh, if when you release the trigger, uh, the wire is sticking in the weld puddle, freezing in the job, then you need to increase the burn back time. If at the end of the weld, uh, you can see the arc growing and working its way back towards the tip and getting dangerously close, you can bring the burn back time down, okay, which will help to keep the wire closer to the puddle. You want it somewhere in between, obviously. You don't want it burning back towards the tip and you don't want it freezing in the weld puddle, so you've got to snap it off every time. Uh, factory setting is 39. I must admit, the factory settings tend to be pretty good, so, so far I've left that alone. Gas end, pretty self-explanatory again. Uh, this is the amount of time the gas valve is going to stay open for at the end of your weld to shield your weld puddle protect your, uh, you know, your, your molten metal that you've just, just left. Okay, obviously keep the torch there until the gas stops and then you can move away. Again, fully adjustable. You can have as, as much or as little as you want. And that's it. Uh, if we were to link this up to a, um, an automatic carriage uh, to get the, um, oh, the desired fill and uh, leg length of weld, so on and so forth, uh, it would recommend a process speed of 50 centimetres a minute on the uh, on the carriage. It really is more for mechanised welding than human welding because they, they don't work in, uh, in travel speed. And we're back to program steps again. Now to come out, we need to go to the uh, mode button again. Press it once, twice, three times, and back to your uh, your main display. Okay, we're now showing wire feed speed in meters a minute and volts okay possibly an easier one to uh, to get your head around is approximate metal thickness or amperage okay we've got we're set to mig we're set to uh, aluminium silicon we're set to one mil and we've got pure argon on as our gas so assuming we've got gas connected and our earth's on the job we're ready to start welding